Tupac today, uh, my little homie, my 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 roommate back in 1990 on tour, uh, my like your badass little cousin that your auntie made you watch. That's who Tupac was for me. <laughs> I know he's a hero to everyone, and he is. He's a hero to, of mine as well. But the way that I know him is is that of um, of being obligated to have to look out, watch out, and make sure everything was good. So I know Pac in a different way, but uh, nonetheless, I, I, I do dig how everybody really, how they were really affected by Pac and his words and his sincerity and who he is and who he was to hip hop and and pop culture. I mean, you know, he's the, he he literally is the last 20th century pop culture icon from America. I mean, you know, when you you look at these icons that they got, they got Clark Gable, they got oh they got Coca Cola Bottle, they got Clark Gable, they got Marilyn Monroe, they got Elvis, they got uh, you know Jimi Hendrix, and they and they got Tupac. That's right. You know, uh, for the for the most part. For the most part, Tupac was uh, a well-read uh, a dude who read lots of books, lots of stuff. He was a, a sharp cat. He was a smart guy. I don't like it when people try to call him gangster rapper. He was a socialist. He was a socialist rapper, and he rapped with social issues. And um, you know, for the most part, he was definitely raised uh, to to become to become you know some some type of leader and. He inserted himself into pop culture via records and movies and things of that nature to uh, ensure himself to be that guy because, uh, you know, in and, and, and that particular time in the 90s like that, it wasn't about, you know, uh, throwing up a fist and, uh, and that you had to insert yourself into pop culture into a way that was different, and he did it. He, I mean, he, he did it. And, you know, but, you know, for the most part, he was a – just a rambunctious, a mischievous a cat that was, you know, that was that was fun loving, but uh, definitely ready to get into some shit or or set it off, start something. So you know, he uh, he was a revolutionary. You know, he was a revolutionary. You know, and I, you know, and uh, for the most part, he just kind of came in a different way. He, you know, he, he's Huey Newton on records and in movies. I mean, you try to put that together. He came. It was it was Pac's first show. Um, you know, he kept aiming the microphone into the monitors on stage, and it kept feeding back. And because of that, he thought that the sound man was sabotaging our show. You know, and uh, it was like, no, it, it's you who keep poking the mic into the monitors. And he's like, I'm like, you know, what you need to do is calm down. Stop acting like this world owes you something. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, nobody owes you anything. And he's like, let me tell you something, Jake. Every black man owes me, and you know, and I was like, you know, and I'm like, we all looked at him and we stopped and we looked and we started laughing and shit. But you know what? He was right. When all this, <laughs> when all this, when all this was said and done, I didn't know why every black man was gonna owe him, but uh, uh, you know, I gather, uh, I gather we do on some level, you know, on some level, um, you know, uh, whether it's just the idea of teaching you how to speak up and speak up for yours how to not accept no for an answer, how to look and try to find the truth through all of the bull crap that uh, people have us trying to sort through. Um, you know, he, he very much was a truth, a truth sayer and a, made you speak the truth as well. So he was your little brother that spoke up and made you speak up and gave you courage where you didn't have any before. Thank you.